As your hand touches the dim Audra, you feel the same cool, pricking sensation that you did when you touched the pillar near Port Maje. You concentrate on the pillar. The world around you swiftly falls away, leaving only the vast emptiness of the in-between. The Audra and a multitude of golden threads undulating off into the distance. For a second time, you gather the threads in your mind and bind them together, forming a solid tether that ripples out toward its distant anchor. Again, a crack sounds from the terminus. Your consciousness is violently pulled along the cord. You are prepared for the sensation this time, but are still disoriented when you come to a sudden stop. You find yourself standing behind a familiar titanic statue as it trudges through invisible waters. Standing at Aethys's shoulder, your soul is dwarfed by the massive god's form. Energy pulses along the tether, each wave feeding the Audra's movements. He stops. His head cranes behind him, again accompanied by the sound of stone shearing and buckling. His eyes rest upon you. He does not reach for the cord, but considers you for a long span of silence before speaking. Your first attempt to contact me was brave. This second attempt, is it born out of desperation or something else? Why do you continue to follow me, Watcher of Cad Nua? There was no malice in that act. It was a coincidence of time, place, and necessity. Aethys' voice grows fainter as he speaks. I am sorry for what I did, but it was done for the hope of a better future. I hoped only to explain, not to pacify you, not to pardon my actions. Can you be pacified, or is revenge your goal? If I could pay it, I would. But there is not a fine in all Aora heavy enough to clear my debt, Watcher. I cannot undo what I have done. But perhaps I can help make a better future for us all. Aethys becomes silent. You can sense his presence advancing back along the cord between you. His energy flows over your hand, tendrils of light probing into the air around you. They poke and prod at the silent lost souls hovering in your vicinity. You are in a unique position. In spite of the work of the Leaden Key and Hand Occult, you have seen through our facade. You know the gods' true nature. Without the benefit of your knowledge, few mortals would be willing to accept the true history of their gods. After all, we weren't. The last time I walked Aora, I made a mistake in not revealing my true purpose. I believe you would understand it better than most. Yes, I will tell you. But this is not the time. As I take this body farther from the lighthouse, the tether grows weaker, and I have already tarried too long. Soon this link will unravel completely. If I have not reached my destination when that happens, I will need to pull more souls from your world. It is. When you contacted me from Port Maje, I had to sever my tether to the Luminous Adra. Without it, I lacked the strength to reach Hasongo. I pulled souls from the creatures of the ocean and from the people at Hasongo until I could reach the lighthouse. The soldiers and Naga there were no threat to me. I did not kill them out of malice but simply to keep this body moving.
Not a vulnerability, but a dire and terrible limitation. One that I knew before I took this form. The edges of Aethys's massive form blur and dissolve. The huge figure retreats from you. As it moves, the tether begins to rapidly unravel. As Aethys speaks, his voice sounds garbled, fragmented, and distant. If you would know more, find me at the Ashen Maw in Margren's Teeth. I must rest there before I begin my final work. When I leave that place, you will not be able to follow. Before I go, I should return some of this to you. I still have need of the great power of your soul, but I can spare you this portion. A pulse of energy moves back along the golden cord toward you. It feels familiar, comforting, even before it contacts you. Within the light, there is a dark core, roiling and violent, contrasting the warmth and brilliance of its outer shell. I have seen the darkness in you, Watcher, but will not judge you for it. Never again. Take what is yours. The energy washes over you, flooding you with feelings and memories you had thought long forgotten until they settle back into the cracks of your soul. And then the tether and cord snap, Aethys' figure evaporating into dust that mingles with the endless gray expanse. Heat rushes over you, and the uncomfortable sensation of the Audra Pillar's presence cuts off. The gloom of the in-between is pierced by the light of the living world. You are back in the lighthouse, no longer dim. The luminous Audra beside you is filled with warmth and light. Of course, 